Hey, I'm Jake and today I'm drawing this mech snake and I'm talking about rewilding your imagination. All right, before we get into things today, I need to sell some books. Uh, if you haven't gotten a copy of Drawings 5, this is probably the best art book I've created to date. This is my fifth one I've done in the series of drawings books. Uh, this book has not only like a comic at the beginning, like a full uh, 12, 13 page comic. It also has a little how to draw section in it. And then just tons of great art from creatures to robots to vehicles to all kinds of different things. So it's definitely something if you're a person who wants something a little, uh, an interesting book, a creative book, a book that kind of sparks some imagination on your bookshelf or on your desk, get a copy of Drawings 5. I would appreciate that. Thank you. About today's video, um, today's video, I kind of get into just some things that I've been thinking about a lot uh, lately, which is how to, how to not waste so much time on um, on social media looking at stuff that you're essentially the same stuff over and over. Granted, there's so many creative people and I'm inspired so often, but um, it's just getting more and more of me saying, seeing the same kind of variations on themes and less and less of seeing things like new and exciting. Um, uh, and, and I think what, what's going on, you know, really what's at work here, and I, I get more into it there, is just that there, it's just designed to show you what you like to like. <laughs> and, uh, and I miss the days where you are shown things that you didn't know you liked. And the algorithm, I don't think, uh, is that smart, is smart enough to know that yet. So uh, I get into why I think that way, um, I get into some solutions, and uh, in the meantime, I'm also drawing this mech snake thing, which I think, uh, I really like the design of it. It's something for um, a, a future comic that I'm working on. I've written the comic. Um, it's one of the, uh, you know, characters that, uh, that the, the good guys have to like uh, eliminate, have to deal with in this comic, and I wanted a really interesting, like cool beast for them to for them to fight. So this is this will be a skull chaser missile mouse comic, but it's primarily missile mouse who fights this uh, who fights this monster. So it was fun to to work on, and uh, that's it. Let's let's get down to it. Okay, so this is uh, this is just a scan for my sketchbook. This is a, a the original snake uh, that I designed, and I wanted to. Uh, turn it into a robot, like an um, uh, Android version of this. So um, I just pulled that sketch into Photoshop and started drawing over it. And um, and you can see, you know, drawing over a sketch makes things super, you know, easy to, to not have to like reinvent it from the top, but to just use that sketch and that drawing as a uh, as a template and then to add all the technical bits on top. So... Uh, definitely saved saved me a little time in doing this. But um, there's a quote that I wanted. I have some thoughts, some things I wanted to talk about as we go through this, uh, you know, this drawing of a snake mech. And, and I want to kick it off with this quote I read recently. This is from Tim Wu. Tim Wu is an official in the, the Biden White House. Um, his primary, primary responsibility is technology and competition policy. Um, he's most like famous for coining the term net neutrality. And he's, you know, his main thing is like, let's keep the internet secure. Let's keep it um, equally and equitably accessible to everyone. So he's, he's a good guy. And this is, a, this is what he says. He says, over the coming century, the most vital human resource in need of conservation and protection is likely to be our own consciousness and mental space. And I, and I read that and I thought, you know, that does hold water for me, um, consciousness and mental space. And I feel like that's 
under attack every single day, at least for me, every time I log on to any sort of like social media platform, is that there's just this uh, need for me to uh, want to stay on there, to see everything, to scroll, scroll, scroll. And, uh, and so I want to kind of dig down into that and how I think it's damaging and have, you know, talk about some solutions to, um, to what term I've learned this week, rewilding, or I guess the last couple of weeks I've been thinking about this, rewilding your imagination or making yourself, um, I, I would say, a little more open to um, uh, creative possibilities. Um, what we've seen in the last 10 years as social media empires become like the predominant way in which people experience the internet, it's what it's been incredible, but it's also been terrible, I think, for society. There's been several full documentaries about the pros and cons of social media. It's one of the great debates of our generation. So I don't feel like I need to rehash all of that here. I just want to get into where the artist's desire for inspiration overlaps with the ability of the internet to provide that inspiration. So I think the most substantial problem we face in that regard is the algorithm, capital A algorithm. I was thinking about the biggest difference uh, from my childhood compared to my kids' childhood, and I think it's equal parts the type of media we consumed and the amount of freedom that we had compared to, you know, my kids today. When I was a kid, I didn't have cable. I just had the stations that were available via, via our TV. I watched a lot of reruns of shows, a lot of game shows, a lot of PBS shows, a lot of sports, a lot of news shows. I, I watched everything, and it was not because I wanted to watch it. It was just what was on. Uh, and what happened, though, like this side effect of that was I was exposed to many different facets of the world that didn't necessarily align with my interests. Uh, so today, though, I primarily experience entertainment and news through the filter of algorithms, which are designed to show me what I show interest in. This makes things really interesting, but narrow. I kid you not, I didn't hear about the World Series until I talked to a neighbor about it on Halloween night. And I was like, oh, what's going on with you? And they started talking about the World Series. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's going on right now. I haven't seen anything because I'm primarily not interested in sports. And so I, I, just, I just missed it. it. You know, social media is trained not to show me sports because I don't interact with it. Um, that wouldn't have happened 20 years ago. 20 years ago, I, I would have seen something about it on the news or something. Social media algorithms and their user interfaces are inherently designed to keep you on these platforms as long as possible, not to entertain you, not to educate you, not to offer inspiration, not to connect you to others, not even to get you to purchase something. Their sole purpose is to extract as much information from you as possible, and so they want to keep you on your attention on that on that platform. And so ultimately, I think there's better ways to spend your time and and to use it to expand your creative inputs. So for the last couple of years I've been taking steps to remove uh, my creative inputs from algorithmic influence. I had been noticing an increasing desire, like I said earlier, to scroll, 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 to find things that really stimulate my imagination. I was seeing a lot of things that I've seen before, albeit variations of those things. Uh, it, it'd been getting rarer and rarer for me to be, surpri to be surprised by something. Uh, and m I felt like my time investment on social media wasn't giving me the interesting returns that I was expecting. And it's, it all comes down to social media was doing what it was designed to do, and that's show you what you like. But creativity is built on a foundation of connecting dots that no one else thinks to connect. And I want to read this quote from Steve Jobs. He says, creativity is just connecting things. When you ask people how they did something, they feel a little guilty because they didn't really do it. They just saw something. It seems obvious to them after a while. That's because they were able to connect experience they've had or connect experiences they've had and synthesize new things. 
And the reason they were able to do that was that they've had more experiences or have thought more about their experiences than other people. Unfortunately, that's too rare a commodity. A lot of people in our industry haven't had very diverse experiences, so they don't have enough dots to connect, and they end up with very linear solutions without a broad perspective on the problem. The broader one's understanding of the human experience, the better design we will have. And I think that holds true. You know, he's talking to, um, I don't know, software designers or computer designers, but I think it applies to illustrators, artists, writers, creative type of people. So how can you connect dots? Of all the dots you're seeing, are the um, how can you connect these dots or, or gather more dots and acquire more dots than, than other people to connect them? Um, to combat this, you know, this problem, I've been returning, I've been doing a few things. Um, and, and I'll get into specifics uh, in a little bit here, but I want to tell you about this article that I read last week. It's called Nine Ways to Rewild Your, Rewild Your Attention by Clive Thompson. And uh, it's great. His thesis in this article, he says, instead of crowding your attention with what's already going viral on the inner tubes, focus on the weird stuff. Hunt down the idiosyncratic posts and videos that people are publishing, oft, oftentimes to tiny and niche audiences. It's decidedly unviral culture, but it's more likely to plant in your mind the seed of a rare new idea. And that, that absolutely aligns with what I've been trying to do and, and what I'm currently like focused, really focused on. Um, so if this is something that concerns you, look at his nine suggestions to rewild your imagination. But I want to talk about like the four things that are working for me right now. Number one, um, diverting my attention when I'm on the internet to pre-web 2.0 websites. So these are all the websites that are like preceded social media. So like I go on Flickr, I go on uh, other art communities like, um, you know, old DeviantArt and ArtStation and places like that. And I just kind of look at what people's favorites are. So not what I think my favorites are or not what the community has said, this is our favorites, but I'll go find an artist I like or a photographer I like, and I go to their favorites, the the things that they've starred, and I look through and I see what they've been looking at. And sometimes that leads you to some really, especially on Flickr, some really interesting, you know, off the, off the road type of stuff. Um, I spend a lot of time on Wikipedia, just following links and you know, kind of teaching me, me uh, about stuff that uh, I wouldn't have uh, initially been exposed to. Also, just different wikis in general. So I find a topic that's, you know, tangential to what I'm I'm interested in. And sure enough, there's a Wikipedia or a wiki devoted just to that. And I'll go down and, and check that stuff out and, and read that. Blogs are another good thing. There's still people who use blogs, but then there's all these pre like 2014 blog posts that are just still hanging out on the internet, and there's still a lot of cool, in- interesting stuff there. And then I like to go to people's home pages, their actual websites, because you're going to see stuff that they don't post on social media there. Okay, so that's number one. Go to websites that aren't social media websites. Number two, pay attention to the real world around you. Um, And I remember a story, I talked to Larry McDougall, who's this great illustrator. He came up with a book called Guelph. You got to check that out. But back in the day, he worked at a comic shop. And at that comic shop, they had uh, Mobius come and visit them. And uh, Mobius, one of my favorite illustrators, and he's in this, I forget what town this was in, somewhere on the East Coast, I believe. And he's hanging out with them, and they're just hanging out in a normal, like, suburb area. And and he looks around, and he says to the to, to Larry, he says, this is what you have to draw. <laughs> okay? You know, and I think, like, Mobius is from France, and France is beautiful, and there's all kinds of things going on there, uh, creative and inspiring things. But if you just look around wherever you live, no matter how uninteresting you think it is, that is is weird and interesting to people who aren't from there. And so look at it, almost try to look at it through the eyes of like Mobius would if he was visiting there. 
and and that's what you have to draw. So that's one thing. Just pay attention to to what's around you. There's another great book uh, I've been slowly going through. It's called The Art of Noticing by Rob Walker. Subtitle is 131 Ways to Spark Creativity, Find Inspiration, and Discover Joy in the Everyday. So just go through that and do those exercises. And there's things like, you know, um, uh, there's all these like mindfulness noticing games that you can do. Like, number one, categorizing things and paying attention to, to category, categories of things. Like he gives an example, notice security cameras. Just everywhere you go, document mentally security cameras or abandoned pay phones or birds, things like that. And then also in the same vein, pay attention to like non-man-made passing of time. So sun rises and sunsets or moon rises and moon sets, things that, you know, the migration of birds, I don't know, just kind of slow down and pay attention to some of these things that that you you might not pay attention to um, because there is some creativity and there's some cool things that can come come out of that. Um, number three, read real paper books, okay? Uh, don't Google stuff. Don't, like, don't search online for it, but actually go to a library. Go to a bookstore, a used bookstore or a new bookstore. Start a collection of your own books and refer to those books. You're going to find so many things in books that just aren't accessible online. Um, and, and what I like to do is bookmark things. I put post notes in them. I take notes of them so that I can go back and like see stuff that may have impacted me earlier that I might have forgotten about. And then the fourth one, the last one is, this is, this is extreme. And I've been doing this, I did this two months ago. I unfollowed everyone on Instagram. I just, it, Instagram didn't want me to do it. After I unfollowed 200 people, I was following over 1,000. After I unfollowed 200 people, Instagram was like, you know, in order to protect the community, you're not allowed to use Instagram for the rest of the day. So I had to do it in like a week's time, <laughs> 200 a day to unfollow everybody. Um, and now what happens is when I log on to Instagram, it's just a tool for me to upload stuff and not really download stuff. I mean, I can go search out individual creators and kind of look at their profiles. And I prefer doing that because I can see, you know, look at individuals who I'm very interested in because I'm reminded of them. Uh, you know, I remember them. Um, I did copy and paste all of my following, all, everyone I was following to a document that I can go through and like click on it and check on people and see things. But for the most part, I haven't felt like I've been missing out too much. Uh, everybody who I really like and I really follow, I still, you know, once a week kind of poke in and see what they've posted or whatnot. And it usually, I would say, it takes me a couple months to like cycle through everybody. But um, what it's done is it's gotten me off of mindless scrolling and focusing more on looking at other things for inspiration. Okay, so if you have other ideas for how to rewild yourself or how to boost your creativity that are along these lines. I'd love to hear it. Let me know in the comments. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's that. Here's the book I was talking about, The Art of Noticing. Um, I link to it below, but I want to read this quote just to wrap this whole thing up. I want to read this quote at the end. Last thing in the book. This is from William James. This quote, it says, our life experience will be equal to what we have paid attention to, whether by choice or whether by default. And I want to extend that a little bit further. Not our life experience, but the work that we make as creators, as artists, as musicians, as whatever it is that you do, the work that you make will be equal to what you've paid attention to. And what you pay attention to may be something deliberate that you've really tried and focused on or it could just be default whatever it is you've let washed over you without any control and so i think my main desire from this whole thing that i'm talking about is just to for me personally and, and really all these videos that i make are me working through stuff and figuring stuff out and if anybody else gets anything out of these that's great but it's mostly me just um, 
just kind of um, self-therapy, I guess. But what I want to pull from this is hopefully you get a, some sort of um, desire to look outside the boundaries, to extend beyond what you're normally used to and expose yourself and look for things that will, um, that will, I guess, boost your creativity, make you think outside of the box a little bit, and make you uh, do things that are, are, I guess, going back to the connected dots things, acquired dots that people haven't acquired yet and connect them in ways that people haven't connected them yet. And so that's my hope for you, and that's what I'm trying to do. And uh, good luck out there, and talk to you next time.